I'm May Whitney Brown. And as you might have guessed, I've been thinking a lot about human existence lately. <laughs> I guess because I saw my grandmother this week, probably for the last time. Oh, she's not sick or anything. She just bores the hell out of me. <laughs> But that's why I'd like to talk this evening about that bane of human existence, fate. Fate and her sleazy sister, karma. <laughs> because fate, my friends, is a funny thing. It's like a fabric that's woven with the threads of circumstance. Or maybe it isn't. <laughs> maybe it's a little more like a filthy rag that's spotted with the stains of coincidence. That's a nice metaphor. I love metaphors. They just come to me like... <laughs> like something comes to something or other. But back to fate. Because fate has been hounding me like a Mormon missionary with an Amway franchise. <laughs> it caught up with me in Seattle this summer. Now, it's a lovely city, Seattle. Thank you. But oddly enough, it was raining the week I was there. <laughs> Well, one day it was sunny, and I was having my lunch at an outdoor cafe. It was on top of an eight-story building, just above the high water mark. <laughs> it was the middle of July, so I ordered the watermelon deluxe. Now, in Seattle, that's a watermelon and a knife. I was, I was about halfway through, and I noticed in the alley, eight stories below me, a basketball hoop. <laughs> well... I was also wide open for the shot, so I took my stance with the melon. The busboy rushed over to try to guard me, of course, but I faked to the left and went over his head. <laughs> melon went smashing through a window on the other side of the alley, shattered it like a wine glass at an Ella Fitzgerald concert. <laughs> Freaked me out, naturally. I figured, what if the police showed up with a helicopter? Any simple-minded detective could land a surveying crew in the alley and plot the trajectory of the melon through the window up to the roof. <laughs> there was the evidence, seeds scattered around my table like pork chop bones at a Baptist picnic. <laughs> but of course, the police never showed up. No justice was left to the filthy rag of fate, my friends, and that night in the club, it sopped me up like a spilled drink. <laughs> There I was, talking to the audience. And I noticed a lady sitting in front. I noticed her because she was listening to a Walkman. <laughs> now, normally that doesn't bother me, but she started singing along. And I've always felt they should have a warning on those boxes like they do on cigarettes. Caution, this will not make you sound any better to the outside world. <laughs> And then she got up and started dancing to a tune only she could hear. And that's when someone in the crowd thought she was having a seizure, apparently, and jumped up to stick a bar rag between her teeth. <laughs> well, for some reason, she caused a scene, and so naturally, the bouncer beat the dickens out of her and threw her out. <laughs> but watching the whole thing, I felt kind of bad, almost, in a way, sort of. <laughs> People should have a good time when they come to a comedy show and not get bar rag stuffed in their mouth. Maybe it's a little out of line, but that's how I feel. Anyway, I went outside afterwards to see if she was still there. I figured maybe I could tell her a few jokes because she had missed part of the show. Was well, as, as faint that filthy rag would have it, she was there. She was lying in a doorway down the street while she was trying to recover some kids that found her. You know how the kids are these days. They'd tied her shoelaces together. <laughs> then they'd taped a kick me sign on her back and shaved her head. <laughs> she was lying in a pool of transmission fluid and among some old fish heads and mouse droppings. <laughs> Bald with her shoelaces tied together. People kicking her as they walked by. But I noticed she was crying. <laughs> so I went over to her and I said, 
I said, what's the matter? <laughs> and just like a woman, she said, nothing. <laughs> so, so I said to her, then why don't you cheer up, my dear? Look at the bright side of things. There's a lot of bald people in the world. You don't see them lying in piles of fish heads and mouse droppings, people kicking them. She said, oh, it's not that. I said, well, what is it then? And she said, well, my little Pekingese dog died today. And here, unfortunately, the story turns a little sad. <laughs> I wish I could share with you some of the grief I felt at the very thought of one less Pekingese dog in the world. So I asked her how it happened. Because my neighbor has a Pekingese dog. I thought it'd be an awful shame if the same thing happened to it. She said it was a, it was a freak accident. He was getting a drink of water this afternoon. Standing up on the toilet like he does. And all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a watermelon came flying. 